Let's think for a moment about the possibilities of the future. Man has within his grasp the power to wipe out civilization and practically destroy the earth in a few days' time. But again, he has the power that can carry him into outer space. For the first time in history, his foot is on the threshold of the vast, illimitable universe. In the next half century, people will see as well as hear around the world. Pocket-sized radio instruments will enable individuals to communicate with anyone, anywhere. Newspapers, magazines, mail, and messages will be sent through the air at lightning speed and reproduced in the home. The transition is about to occur. What happens on Earth now will affect the entire universe. It is an important time. And you come to Earth at this time on assignment to create a shift, to make a change, to assist in the transition. You are magnificent beings, bringing back the concepts of light, which are information, and love, which is creativity, is the plan. It takes renegades to come into a system that has been primarily dark for eons and change it. It is a vast plan you are participating in, in such a challenging place at such a challenging time. Also, we are here to assist, to teach, and to evolve as we go through this process together. We are assisting you in bringing your own knowing forward. We can't be certain to what extent the actual laws governing a natural world are similar to those in the game of life. We do know that the laws governing a natural world are simple. We can write them down in simple equations. We can program computers to simulate them. And from great simplicity, we derive immense complexity. The rules you know, of the real universe are so hard that we've been trying to understand them for thousands of years. And, you know, we haven't finished yet by any means. Um, so one can't really uh, expect too much, but already these tiny trivial laws exhibit interesting behavior. It proved an important point, which is that a system like this could have some of the properties of the real universe. So in a way, its design was copied, but in a very trivial way, from uh, real-life biology. How do you define real? The new evolution stems from information, and it stems from two types of information, digital and analog. Digital is artificial intelligence. The analog results from molecular biology, the cloning of the organism, and you knit the two together with neurobiology. That will provide us the software, algorithmic methods, to simulate you know, all of the human brain's capabilities. What is real? Real is simply electrical signals interpreted by your brain. Science has taught us, against all intuition, that apparently solid things like crystals and rocks are really almost entirely composed of empty space. Broken only by tiny particles so widely spaced they shouldn't count. Why then do rocks look and feel solid and hard and impenetrable? The fabric of reality seems to possess properties that are reminiscent of a hologram. Mm -hmm. So if you put those two ideas together, that our brain seems to be holographic and the universe is holographic, it suggests that maybe that it's compelling evidence that, that... We are living in a computer programmed reality, and the only clue we have to it is when some variable is changed. Deja vu. Is it really so hard to believe? Am I? It goes up and down, around and around. It has 
it's thrills and chills, and it's very brightly colored, and it's very loud, and it's fun for a while. Who am I? They begin to question, is this real or is this just a ride? And other people have remembered, and they come back to us and they say, hey, don't worry, don't be afraid, ever, because this is just a ride. We live in a universe that allows evolution to take place because it can encode information. Ultimately, when you come right down to it, the question that has to be asked is, who am I? As you know, Mother Nature uses all kinds of mathematical languages. That when we go to understand physical phenomena, we generally find that there's some sort of mathematical underpinning to whatever the phenomena is. You know, like the Fibonacci sequence? That's like that series you find in nature? Like the face of a sunflower? Wherever the spirals. You see there's math everywhere. Encoded data. How did we end up in a universe like that? Why should the world behave according to mathematical laws? And it turns out, in fact, all of our senses appear to rely on sort of Fourier transforms, that they all seem to use the same mathematics. So again, here's evidence that the brain uses the same mathematics to decipher the sensory world is involved in the making of a hologram, mm -hmm. which is, as I say, not proof, but compelling evidence that something is going on there. It is not only that it becomes easier to describe with mathematics. As you go deeper and deeper into reality, mathematics becomes the only way to describe reality. The process of moving into this higher octave of understanding, this blending of dimensions and creation of new territory, will lead everyone through greater understanding of death. How are you going to run the universe if you can't even answer a few unsolvable problems? Huh? Come on, big fella, let's see what you got. It's all about replacing parts, really, but at the really low microscopic level. So, of course, you don't replace, like, the whole of the liver or the whole of the brain in one go. You just replace one gene or one bit of a cell or something like that at a time. But it is, in principle, just the same as replacing the parts of a car when they need to be replaced. That's why it's not so far-fetched. If something isn't forbidden by the laws of physics, then what could possibly prevent us from doing it other than knowing how? In other words, it's a matter of knowledge, not resources. Once you understand how to do sufficiently comprehensive maintenance, that's it. You can just keep the machine at a manageable level of damage, so to speak, a level that is not prejudicial to the functioning of the machine. The analogy we make to biological circuits is to commu computer circuits, where we have logic gates, the high-low levels are switched by packets of electron charge. Maybe we can ultimately get, get down to single charge. Biological processes are already at the unit entity. Single signaling molecules switch biochemical logic gates, and this gives cells their function, gives us life. The secret of life itself, the DNA molecule, a genetic discovery that could give man the ability to create life specifications. With it comes the power to change evolution itself. Never have we had such opportunity or such awesome responsibility. I'm in rote, but I'm not afraid to consider the final question as to whether ultimately in the great future we can arrange the atoms the way we want, the very atoms all the way down. What would happen if we could arrange the atoms one by one the way we want them? We're just at the edge now of this very parallel digital revolution in fabrication, the molecular assembler, that it really builds everything on a molecular scale. Mm -hmm. So that at that stage, it's very much like life, where a part can make a part that can make a part. But really, this is only the beginning of what is possible. I mean, one day, there is going to be a whole class of molecules that are better at following our instructions than DNA is. Imagine what that might mean. If our computers were made out of these, then they could rewire themselves. Imagine if the whole world was made out of materials that was a living fabric. 
That would mean that one day, we're gonna be in a world that's made of devices where the materials that make those devices are no longer static, but are actually responding to their environments and to us, their users. A digital frontier to reshape the human condition. <laughs> I always thought that was just a plug line. In our world, she could change everything. Previously, we were constrained by our place in society, by biology, by socioeconomic forces, by world events. For the first time, those things are not going to apply. For the first time, we are being challenged to just push ourselves to our limits. We are making the transition from being passive observers to the dance of nature to being active choreographers of nature. We are entering an era of unparalleled possibilities, which raises profound questions about who we are and how we will live. So is that an enhancement to improve that, or is it repairing a defect? It doesn't really matter. We should be using technology to make ourselves better. I don't want to be human. I want to see gamma rays. I want to hear x-rays, and I, I, want to, I want to smell dark matter. I want to reach out with something other than these prehensile paws and feel the solar wind of a supernova flowing over me. I'm a machine. I'm a machine, and I can know much more. Machines are not the problem. It's the monkeys behind the machines that need to be addressed. It took millions of years for man to evolve from a super ape, super ape into a thinking animal. Thinking animal. But during the past 30 years of increasing gadgetry, man has backslid mentally and physically. Technology perfects machines that even feeble minds can operate. The unintelligent user of gadgets still retains the mentality of primitive man. Machines get better and better, illogical beliefs persist. Mechanized and moronic man moves toward extinction. Intelligence systems like AIs have commonly been portrayed as a bloodthirsty threat to humanity, but the reality is that nothing of the sort is inherent to all AIs, and artificial intelligence is fully specified by how it's initially written. This is something we have to be especially careful with. When an intelligence can modify itself or decide what the systems it produces will want to do, it's very important that this intelligence has a stable and benevolent system of goals. This is absolutely crucial to ensuring a suitable outcome, and designing a safe singularity may end up being one of the most pressing problems we'll have to face in the coming century. The future is an endless network of dim and potentially lethal corridors which we must navigate with the utmost caution. And so far, the most we can do is fumble in the dark. Here we have a chance to turn on the light, chart a path ahead, and find the best way through. Is it guaranteed? No. But if we can solve this problem, it might unlock the rest. Well, one thing is certain, science alone can't decide it. The question will be decided by the people of the world, by you and by me. And the answer will depend upon what kind of people we are. Yes, science has given us a fearful and yet a very wonderful thing to use. How it is used will be determined by things hidden deep down in the hearts of men. Wake up. The old ways are no longer solutions. They no longer fit and no longer apply. We are going to become gods. Period. <laughs>